Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodyte's Guitar Show. So to spice up the guitar hunting series, I thought we would go to Musician's Friend and Guitar Center and find at least one fantastic deal in their used section. Because these guys tend to get slammed a lot for, you know, being overpriced, you know, dealer type stuff. So I thought it'd be a fun little challenge. And I just recently figured out that there are used guitars sold on Musician's Friend. I had a fan of the show send me something and it's like, what? I didn't know they did that. So if you just type in used, it pulls all this up and then you can subcategorize it. So let's see if we can find anything Gibson related today. That's not a terrible price for a 2019 classic. I think those things brand new are $19.99. So you can save a little bit of money on a lightly used one, but what's going on here? Used Gibson Custom Flying V. You don't see these too often. And I'm pretty sure these are just Guitar Center's listings, but since many of the stores are shut down, they're just started to sell them here or something. I mean, what's kind of unique about that is you can actually gain some of the Musician's Friend rewards points by buying used instruments now. So this looks by the serial number to be a 2018. I mean, 3,500, that does not seem that bad for this. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just how much they go for. It looks like around 3,000 on the used market, plus or minus like 400. I'm kind of surprised by that. They're fancy, but they're not traditional, and maybe that's why a bunch of people don't want them. So that's priced at the top of the heap, surprisingly. Oh, but how about this? Les Paul Standard Premium Plus. I guess it depends what year it was made. That's kind of the downfall I'm seeing right away. The descriptions are very lacking. But so far, it's looking pretty clean, all right? So that's very clearly 2007, so that means it's going to be one of the earliest chambered ones. So 2000 bucks for that, that's definitely towards the top of the market. But I'm really hoping we find like a rare guitar because sometimes you get lucky. They don't exactly know what they have or they label it wrong. Or you find a guitar that just doesn't show up too often like this guy. So 2003 Les Paul Jr. Special, oh man. I'm glad Gibson doesn't give things crazy names anymore. Mixing two names together of different models. A thousand bucks, it appears somebody put some sort of a Bigsby on there, so I'm not a player on that one. And we only get one photo. You don't see these 2015 Deluxes too often. Oh nice, that's not half bad of a deal. I think I sold mine for like 1400 or so. But you gotta remember, mine was really special because it had that super figured body. This guy's just plain. But if you're looking for one of these 2018s with that limited edition headstock decal, 1140, not the worst price I've ever seen one of these things go for. If you wanna learn more about that, you can check out the Trade Tuesday episode where I reviewed one of those. Oh nice, one of those ocean green 2017s. People are always looking for those. That was a super popular finish for that year. Oh, they even got an SG Supreme. People fawn over the Les Paul Supremes, but the SG Supremes? I don't know, maybe people just don't know about them enough. I've had one of these before. I think mine needed some sort of a repair. Generally, you can pick these up anywhere between like 1100 for super beat up examples. And this is definitely top of the market range, you know, 17 to 19. But it appears to be an okay shape from the photos, but yet that headstock, well, I guess the headstock looks okay too. From far away, it looked a little bit suspicious as to how much it may have aged. Oh, sweet. Dang, I, I didn't even know Gibson did a limited run RD bass in 2018. I thought that was like 2014 or something. Is this Chris's signature guitar? Is that what it is? That one must have came out slightly before I was paying attention to brand new guitars. I love the volute on that. Usually Gibson messes up the reissue volutes. They don't quite look right, but that almost has the exact look that it should have. I wonder if they called it the RD Artist because they did whatever these fancy electronics are on them, you know, symbolizing the original RD Artists. Because the original RD Artist bases, they are much fancier than that. Because they get the F hole on the headstock, I actually have had one of those before. It was the curly maple top version. Chicago Music Exchange bought that one from me in a hurry. <laughs> Anything else interesting on this page? That's kind of freaky, what is that? One very not so detailed photo, and it looks like it has like HP specs to it. Like we've got the metal knurled knobs, you've got the chrome toppers to the pickup rings. It's interesting. That, that's a strange 57 reissue. Somebody had to have customized that. But being a 57, that's not the worst price. Usually anywhere between 25 to 35 on the newer R7s. 
But then again, I can't even see the headstock, so who knows if we're actually dealing with a custom shop historic reissue. There's a 2020 SG Custom. There was another YouTuber that just purchased one of those and uh, made a topic about Rich Light lately. His would not be a 2020, though. Oh, that's funny. They're selling it for 849 That's more than it was brand new. <laughs> that's funny. They had just recently blown those out, too. They should know better than that. But I guess now that the blowouts are done and they're no longer available new in most locations, maybe they will go back up. I thought they were pretty good guitars, to be honest. There's a blueberry burst for anybody looking. Oh, whoa. Is that pink? Or is it just really bad photography? I wish it was pink because that'd be cool, but I think it's actually meant to be red. Yep, yeah, you can see it now. 2016? I have one of these. We unboxed it like six months ago. Mine will be significantly cheaper than that, so I don't think that's the deal we're looking for. What's up with that? $7.99. <laughs> 849 okay 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 that just goes to show you that guitar center store doesn't really know their pricing that well i'm really hoping we can run into one of those really hard to find artist signature guitars yeah see there's something a lee written hour custom shop l5 not exactly what i had in mind but something interesting nonetheless Ooh, i like that you get the finger tail piece or whatever they call it and I just love L5s that only have that neck mini humbucker. They look so classy. I would love... Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened to our frets? Did somebody refret it already? Jeez, those look like massive frets. That's the other thing that kind of scares me away is there's literally no description on these things. But since there's no description, they usually are pretty lenient with returns. Cool! They even have a Firebird X. So there you go. If you're looking to purchase a survivor, it's here. They don't tell you if they're including any of the electronics that you should have with it, but hey, you can buy it. For a short period of time, people were paying crazy money for those things. But I think the hype has kind of died down a little bit. So most people are just like, yeah, Firebird X, don't want that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Even worse, they want $1,000 for it after a 7% discount. That's got to be a typo on someone's part because it's not even that much in store. <laughs> Looks like they've got some kinks to work out in this new program. I would almost venture to say that's a deal. Gary Clark Jr. SG. You know, we haven't heard anything about his signature flying V in a while. Hopefully they release that thing soon. Maybe put real P90s in it this time, not these other P90S type pickups. Yeah, these things, I see them on Reverb all the time for like 15 to 1600 bucks. That's not a bad price. I think we found something that we could slightly classify as an okay deal. Looks like they got a reverse explorer. That's pretty cool. Unless you're an absolute end user and it's mint condition, has everything, it, it's not worth paying that much. Like the most I would pay is 1100 bucks because I don't want to have to ask any more than 1400 for it. This thing's pretty sweet. ES5 Switchmaster. Seems to have a decent top going on there from the Custom Shop Crimson Division. Eh, the back, it could be better, but they've got a decent neck on it. But that headstock looks really weird from that angle. Like, what happened to it? It's got such a deep carve. But yet on the back, it looks right. That's 17 pages. And we're only on six. Oh, cool. They even have a red one. So if you want a complete set, yeah, if you go to Reverb right now, looks like there's only red ones available. So sometimes you have to do some deep diving if you want to find other colors. They even have some of those LP8 monitors. I was really on the edge if I should actually have purchased the ones that I did, but I love that I have because the LP8s are all sold out everywhere now. So I think I paid around like 180 bucks each and they still sell around that $500 price point. So I do not regret that purchase at all. So there's even a set for 800. <laughs> I paid way less than that. So that's kind of like that one thing that I purchased just to sit on because I think it's a quirky piece of Gibson history. And you know, maybe 50, 60 years down the line, people will be like, yeah, it was kind of a dumb idea. They might not be the best monitors, but it's a part of Gibson history. And I don't know enough about other monitors to really care if they're good or not. I get people asking me that all the time. Hey, how do you like those things? 
I honestly don't use them enough to give an opinion, but I think they look nice sitting there. Whoa, there's a freaky modified thing. I didn't think Guitar Center took modified guitars. I mean, like, that is a very specialized... That's kind of an uncommon find, the Government Series 2 Flying V. That's not the worst price, as long as it has the case. Series 2 is not as popular as Series 1, and most people want the Les Pauls from that series. Those government guitars really were billed as they're going to be collectible in the future. I think they just kind of became instant collectibles, and their value really hasn't risen too much lately. They just kind of plateaued off around that $15 to $2,000 range. We'll have to see if that changes in the future. Ooh, did we find a deal on that one? Darn, it's a 2007. I thought it said 1990-something. It's not a terrible price if you like the chambered ones, but I'm a little bit scared away by only one photo. But 1800 bucks for a used standard? That's supposed to be a premium plus top. Maybe it looks better at other angles, but that could be a deal for someone. G Guitar Center, come on. I think this is why they get a bad reputation, is for listings like this. Gibson 2013 Les Paul Traditional. This is not a traditional. This is, I think, is it a 50s tribute studio model? Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, somebody needs fired at that Guitar Center because if they've priced it like that, that means they probably paid, you know, at least half that. So if they paid 800 bucks, that's, you know, top market value. That one actually has a pretty nice top though for a studio tribute. So definitely no, no, it is not a good deal. I guess at the same time, maybe they just uploaded the wrong photos for that listing. So it's just kind of a listing error. The other thing about Guitar Center is they do not haggle on their used prices. They just have like a price drop system. Like if it sits for 60 days, I think then they start cutting the price or maybe accepting offers. But generally haggling does not go over too well with them. They've got one of these modern double cutaway ones. I did review one. I would be interested in the, uh, the Dusenberg version, the semi-hollow one in like a pink finish. I think that'd be a fun review and demo. Oh, oh, nice. I think we found a deal. $1079.99 for a hot rod studio. These things pretty religiously sell for about 1500 bucks. And I've been looking for one because there's been people that want me to review it. This looks like our last one was 1100, 1399. 1574, 999. Man, if we were still doing Trade Tuesday, I probably would have ended the series with this. 1079.99. Does it have the case? Made in USA, this product comes with the case. Doesn't tell us anything else about this. Oh yeah, this one must have sat for a while. That's why it's got the 10% discount. This thing's always reminded me of the Buckethead Les Paul, because you could just take one of these things and refinish it in white. And you've already got the double white pickups. It's for the same pickups. You could install the kill switch. Man, I just sold this guitar for myself. I'm adding that puppy to my cart. I guess the only downside to that is it's not a baritone guitar. Oh man, they're gonna charge you for shipping? There we go. We're all set on that. I'm looking forward to that. I was originally looking for one of these for like 800 bucks, but I had so many points saved up, it was actually free. <laughs> I guess now that I purchased it, it wasn't a screaming deal, but it was good enough. I've wanted to review one. I'll be able to get out of it anyways. But man, Guitar Center is just where Firebird X's go to die. <laughs> what did they do? Dumpster dive the remnants of the beat up crushed ones and piece them back together? Who knows? You know, I want one of these for like 2000 to like 2250 because I don't think anybody should pay more than like 2800 bucks. So I think this is fair if you just happen to love Tokyo. Why is it in the USA? I don't know. You'd figure some Japanese collectors would want to snap it up. I think these things were like $4,500, $5,000 brand new. Terrible <laughs> investments brand new, but man, I would like to review one one day. I'm not sure which skyline I would choose. It's probably just going to be whatever I find a good deal on. Because it's just a, a weird 2018 exclusive, I believe. There's another 70s tribute. That's not a bad price either. It's getting hard to find these 60s, 50s, and 70s tribute guitars. Somebody even has the witch hat knobs on it. 
yeah, I would have to say that is a very fair price coming from a Guitar Center used listing. You could probably get upwards of 850 on Reverb for it. That's another one that I've wanted to review, but I don't want to pay much more than like 450 for it, because once again, 600 to 650, that's about top value. Is this one black? I'd like to do one of the wine burst ones personally. So I'll leave that one for someone else. That definitely stands out within the bunch. Does that have abalone inlay? Wow, looks like it. Must have been a limited edition thing for these uh, premium quilt tops. It's got the HP style knobs as well. But with all that, you have the 2015 specs. So I guess if you like 2015 specs and you love everything else about this, I guess that's okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> this photo t just says everything. Not every guitar center is created equal. Some places know how to take photographs. Others, they just don't have time for it. Looks like we've got a, a Bill Kelleher. I haven't done that one yet. I think I just had somebody send me a message today saying, please review the Bill Kelleher signature Les Paul. I've done the Golden Axe, which is his Explorer, which I believe has similar electronics within it. I remember when these things were brand new, though. 22... I mean, if you really want one, it's an okay price. Sometimes the market can be rather dry, but I would want to be like 16 at most. Oh, and here's one of those modern double cuts again. Reduced price, $22.50. Sadly, though, it's not one of the semi-hollows. And it looks like we're at the end of the Gibson products. Is there anything else on here? That's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. The Explorer Pro is pretty nice as well, but I don't want to look at that. And whoa, the very last thing we find is something that, you know, the Guitar Center guy told me they would never take a project or anything like this. They had to have gotten an extremely good deal on this. So 2016 Les Paul Standard for all that, eh, I, I, I don't think that's worth it. The fact that they wanted $18.99 brand new is crazy though. And this thing, Les Paul Standard Traditional solid body see th those are two very different things i think there was a les paul traditional that came stock with p90s so this actually could be a really good deal yeah limited edition in 2011 seems to range probably anywhere between 14 to 19. so this one at 1389.99 that's not a bad price the only thing i'm concerned about is the bigsby so if you love the Bigsby and you like that they've done the roller bridge, they've done the locking tuners to make this the best wang jangling Les Paul that you could do, I think that's a fantastic deal. However, if you're looking to flip this, nah, probably not. That looks like a traditional drilled in Bigsby. So if you remove that, you're going to have the holes. Unfortunately, they didn't do the Vibramate unit. And this thing, ooh, says fair condition. Fair condition and only one photo. If this was really clean, you know, for a 1990 with the ebony fretboard, wine red isn't quite as popular, but hey, at least you get the gold hardware. A thousand bucks isn't too bad. So if this is at your local store, hey, maybe go check it out or wait till they put it on 10%. But that was actually fun. I didn't think I was going to find anything like maybe just a few that I'd be like, yeah, if you really want it, it might be right. But I had no idea I was going to buy something tonight from this search. My final thoughts and opinions of buying from Musician's Friend slash Guitar Center online with used, definitely consult somebody that knows what they're actually talking about because as you saw, we did find some listings that were improperly listed and priced. But I don't ever think you're at risk of being scammed through these guys because 45 day returns, that's pretty good in my opinion. Most of the things were priced towards the top of the market, but hey, you're buying from a chain store dealer. What did you really expect? But it is possible to find a deal at Guitar Center. So I hope you troglodytes had a lot of fun doing this with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.